to date, every sensor has one common feature. Being part of a closed electrical circuit, we present a new class of sensors. Standalone, two-dimensional geometric patterns. Electrically open circuits without electrical connections. Powered and interrogated using a National Langley award-winning technology. Power it with an external harmonic magnetic field. The sensor uses this geometry to store a magnetic field along its trace and an electric field between neighboring traces. As the property being sensed changes, the sensor responds frequency, amplitude, or bandwidth changes. This response is interrogated using an external antenna, a single electrical component having no electrical connections. The sensor can be encased in any non-conductive material, providing protection from its environment, even caustic and acidic environments. If the container is non-conductive, the sensor can be placed external to the container without contacting the container, making installation very simple. An oscillating magnetic field from an external antenna powers the sensor. Note the response frequency change with fluid level. When used with combustible or caustic fuels, a barrier can be used to separate the container and any combustible fuel vapors from any measurement system electronics. This has another level of safety. Our framework has made possible a measurement system that should prevent another TWA 800 fatality from happening. An encased sensor can be placed inside a container for measuring the level of any fluid or material, including acids. Any readout device can be used with the sensor, including standard or digital gauges. And a vapor barrier can still be used.
many launch vehicles use liquid fuel. The sloshing motion affects the rocket's attitude. Baffles are used to control the sloshing, but they add weight. At NASA Langley Research Center, we're using an array of four Santic sensors to measure real-time fluid slosh to determine if a fuel tank's internal structural isogrid can be used to replace some of the baffle's surface, thus reducing the overall baffle weight. Using the sensors placed external to a scale liquid oxygen tank, we have easily taken unobtrusive real-time measurements of the fluid asymmetric and rotational motion, giving us a better understanding of the effect that the isogrids have on fluid motion. Any Santic sensor can be used for damage detection. When damaged, such as when punctured, the response shifts in frequency commensurate with the amount of damage. Note the response frequency for the large hole and the decrease with the smaller hole. If the sensor is deposited on a surface that is easily torn or perforated, the sensor can be used for a tamper detection device. When torn, the sensor's response frequency increases. The unique sensor design allows the sensor to function if damaged. Unlike other circuits, there is no single point on the sensor that, if damaged, renders it non-functional. sensors could be used to detect and locate micrometeorite damage to future inflatable habitats, use for space laboratories or hotels. The broad metallic coverage of the array allows the array to be one of many thermal insulation layers. We tested two such arrays at the White Sands Hypervelocity Impact Facilities to understand effects of high velocity damage. Each array was mounted to an aluminum frame for support and placed inside the hypervelocity test chamber. Each test article was targeted with metal projectiles, 1 to 3.6 millimeters in diameter, with speeds ranging from 6.7 to 7.1 kilometers per second to emulate micrometeoroid or orbital debris impacts on the habitat. Using a high-speed camera, we see the projectile at 7 kilometers per second impact the shell's outer layers. The response from a neighboring sensor indicates, in real time, damage to the sensor hit by the projectile. Due to the inductive coupling of the sensor, only one sensor of the array needed to be interrogated to identify damage events to the other sensors, providing another form of telemetry. After all tests were completed, the outer layer had damage consisting of holes 4 to 9 millimeters in diameter. The inner layer had rips torn into the sensor as large as 6.3 centimeters and holes 2 centimeters by 2 centimeters. With all the damage that each sensor received, every sensor was still functional with the new response baseline capable of detecting even more damage. Mm -hmm.